I'm gonna say let's keep moving north. Yeah. It's probably best to avoid familiar people. It'd, 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 it'd feel nice to finish people off and have them be, be done and out of the way and all that. But I think it's just not a great plan. Let's see, these need to be reduced so you can see where everything, everything is. I think one of the upsides of seeing story toggled is just that you can see where you've been so far pretty clearly because all the stories kind of fill those areas in. But yeah, I need to... Uh, I think it, it's probably best to do the first chapters of as many characters as possible, then come back around to try to do the uh, later chapters of everyone, which is a bummer a little bit. It would have been nice to finish off everyone on the entire East Coast and then keep moving west without having to move east again. But it actually might be better to loop around the entire country and then finish off every single character once you're all powerful. I'm a little worried though that like it might be hard to choose which spell which stories to bring with you to a particular character because you gotta remember which ones you've already told them, which is like impossible. I don't know. I'm a little weirded out by the way the game limits you to like three stories per category and you have to pre-equip the ones you want to use, which is weird. I've got some mixed a few mixed feelings. But for now let's just keep let's go north. Oop. That way. Have I already been to Nashville? Yeah. And I'm, and I'm definitely becoming aware of the fact that, like, it does seem like these stories are all stories that aren't being made up for the game, but have some sort of larger relevancy. I think I just don't encourage Amer- I mean, encourage what? I think I just don't encounter American folklore, honestly. But most of these are like they're not really standing out to me, but the Jersey Devil obviously stands out. I'm like the Jersey Devil. I don't understand what the Jersey Devil is that much because it seems to be more of an East Coast thing. But the uh, I've heard a few references to it. That and Mothman. I know I know about Mothman and Jersey Devil. If it's a if it's a cryptid, I'm more likely to have heard of it. I think. So I'm interested in some of that stuff. Oh, I was trying to figure out why this feels weird. It's because I was playing with a controller last time. I'm like, I'm sitting here with the... I'm sitting here with the keyboard and mouse. I'm like, this doesn't feel right. Let's see if I can get this set up. Shit. But yeah, I'm looking at the... Uh, I'm looking at these characters and what stands out to me of two characters that are... Uh, American... Let's see, is it working now? There you go. Two things that stand out to me is obviously the Jersey Devil, but also the Thunderbirds thing. Uh, which admittedly, what's funny is I don't know that from... I don't know that from any actual stories from American heritage and all that. Uh, the reason the thunder, the birds that start, cause storms stands out to me is because I watched Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Which features a giant bird that creates storms and I'm like, huh. That's probably... That's probably the whole basis of that. <laughs> like, knowing, knowing that that was like... Harry Potter world being like, we're gonna have a story happen in America. And then it's like, oh, well then like this, that's the one that, that was an American cryptid that they're referencing. Cause everything was, everything else was traditional fantasy characters, fantasy creatures, because they were, they were all uh, European creatures. But a lot, some of the creatures in the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, because that movie was taking place in the United States, were specific to America. And so, seeing the connection of the Thunderbirds and the, th the Stormbirds from that story in here crossed with the one from Fantastic Beasts, I was like, wait, I'm supposed to recognize this, but I don't. That's what's happening here. The storm swept in just before sundown, heralded by a purple sky and electricity in the air. He sought shelter alongside a grizzled farmer. All he can do is pace muttering to himself. Can't just stay here. You catch. Gotta find her. Who? He looks up at you. My daughter was... My daughter was out down the road. He balls his fists. God. Fuck this. He hauls open the door, shielding his face from the fierce dust. He runs out into the storm. Try to help him. The dust scours your skin, 
and razor winds whip at your clothing. You struggle for breath. The maelstrom has turned the world murky red. You don't see the farmer. Keep going. You press on through the storm. You see the farmer up ahead. He's on his knees. A great dark shape made from swirling dust looms over him. Shadow warning. You manage no more than a cough. The dust thing engulfs the man in his body. The storm whips faster. You can't breathe. You have to get back to shelter. Run. You make it to safety, but don't manage any sleep. The storm settles in the early hours. You find the farmer laid out in the street, his corpse a shriveled mass. He has one arm stretched out in front of him, as if to crawl. Move on. Goddamn. It's a severe response. That's a bummer. I'm in, and I'm in pain now. Uh oh, that's like a Mad Max Fury Road image, the one that they were using for it. Rick's telling us a story. Told you a story about a deer that could not be touched by human hands. You realize it's the story of the deer which chose death over enslavement, but changed in a few major ways. It's definitely part bullshit, right? But also a little real. Yeah. Deer that can't be touched by human hands. I kind of wish we could hear the full versions. I'm slightly disappointed that we hear this full version of the story when we first get the story. And then it evolves into like it's level 3 form and then we don't get to hear that version of the story. We just get a vague, we just get a vague hint about like, oh wow, de deer can't be touched by human hands. But not like, we don't get to hear it as a story. The version we get isn't a story, it's a phrase. We're left to imply the rest of it. Cincinnati. They used to call the police, they uh, call this place the, the, the Paris of America. And it's fitting. The new Union Station makes you feel like an ant. And the music hall is a hell of a place to look at, too. I'm wondering if I'll recognize more of these legends when I get to the West Coast, where I live. The corridors of Cincinnati's music hall reverberate with the sounds of an orchestra warming up for rehearsal. If we unbolt the light rig, we can crush them, says a voice up ahead. No, another answers. Hiding Baldi's baton will be sufficient to stop the din. Approach. The tuxedoed men are slightly transparent. Mustachio on the right has his arms folded. The weaselly one on the left scowls. They start at your arrival. I'm gonna undo those bolts. Weasel feature vanishes into thin air. Damn it all, says the other man. What was that about? We used to be members of the orchestra until, well, you know. Patrick doesn't care for the new blood. It seems like talent died with us, so he does his damnedest to stop them playing. But I can't allow violence against fellow artists. Help me stop him. How do I stop a ghost? With the right tool, you can banish them from the hall. You see, no spirit can stand the sound of the purest of all instruments. The piano? No. The banjo? No. The sousaphone? No. The octobass? He shakes his head, exasperated. No. The triangle. The orchestra has one, but their percussionist's a sop. He never hits it right. If you can get there, you can ensure the only thing brutalized here today is Chopin. Go into the hall. The orchestra is midway through practice. They're in dire need of it. The percussionist dozes on his stool. Everyone's oblivious to the muttering from the lighting rig. Rush for the triangle. You sprint down the aisle and elbow through the incensed musicians. 
The percussionist falls off his stool as you clamber over his xylophone. You grab the beater and bring it down onto the triangle, eliciting a pure, resounding note. And... Y yes? The rafters ring with laughter. The mustachioed ghost appears next to you, doubled over, invisible to the furious orchestra. <laughs> I never thought you'd fall for that. The triangle, for God's sake. <laughs> Thanks for shutting them up, though. Move on. I was fooled. Fooled, I say. I don't need to make money. Oh, I already clicked on it, though. The whole factory is... I, I accidentally clicked more. I should have... Uh, quit You know what? It's fine. I kind of accidentally skipped through that a little bit. Fried chicky. All right. Now I can't earn money anymore. Oh. It was a misclick. And sometimes I reflexively skip dialogue when I when I select it on accident. But then I'm like, ah, shit, but it is new dialogue. I should have read it. I wish there was more whistle songs. Because they're kind of encouraging you to whistle all the time. Yeah, but it replaces the music, which is actually good. You've seen migrant camps before. And they tend to look like the town dump. This one, though... On a good day, this could pass for a town. Wander around. Starched white tents stand tall and many, and a stroll through the grounds finds you neither trash nor trouble. You hear some chatter from a large tent on your left. On your right, a tent in the shadow of the trees emanates a soft buzz. Hmm. There's a buzz on my right. You pass through a shroud of flies into a curtained waiting area. The air is pregnant with the stench of rotten meat. But the area is empty, almost clean, except for the black stains that have seeped into the soil. There's only the curtain, which reaches all the way from one end of the tent to the other. Open it. It wears a black overcoat and a white porcelain mask with a fat, sharp beak. There's a butcher's knife in its gloved hand. This is the pest house. It snaps in a woman's voice and yanks the curtain shut. Move on. Well, they didn't want to see me around. You wait in this soup line for over an hour. It's barely crawling through. It's barely crawling along. You round the corner of the building and see, far away, a lone pair of nurses struggling to ladle out soup to hundreds. Gonna be waiting here a while longer, sighs the mother in line beside you. Seems like it. You and her get talking. After a while, the topic drifts into a strange place, and she starts telling you about the arsonist who burns down gambling dens all over the country. You recognize it as the story of the fire after a poker game at the Weinkauf Hotel in Atlanta, but way more outrageous than your version. I know that story. You tell her your version. That's not exciting, she says dip diplomatically. I mean, it sure sounds realer than what I heard, but I think Tubby likes mine best. She bounces the child encouragingly on her hip, but Toby's too hungry to smile. Oh. That's really distressing. I don't know if I fully believe it. Dude, I don't know, I guess he's the, you, can, you can probably hit us in extreme eventually. Like, kids often can be amused past all sorts of suffering. Who we got here? Can't tell who it is. Oh well.
Ah, new person. Why, hello there. Look like that's a heavy bag you're carrying. Let me get that for you. I insist. You see this uniform? It means you can trust me to make sure this is the most comfortable journey you've ever had in your life. Who am I? Well, I'm no George, I'll tell you that. But that's not important. This trip is about you, friend. Anyway, I'm in the mood for a good, happy story. You got me? A good, happy story. Well, there's those twins that murdered the wrong Twitter. Oh yeah, two brothers who wandered. Yay! Right? The star is a happy story, but it mutated once. Positive wants. attitude. That's what I like to hear. There we go. <laughs> if you're looking for family, you know why a porter can treat a passenger better than anyone else? Because when you step on this train, you're family. It doesn't matter who you were before or who you're going to be after you step off. Have any optimistic tales? I'd like to hear one of those. Optimistic. Oh man, it's hard. I'm, I'm used to bad stories. Ah, uh, the, mol the molasses guy is kind of helpful, maybe? I'm not sure. Just like I told you, friend. Miles of smiles. Oh, I'm a genius, apparently. Joy. A good porter always finds his own happiness in the joy he brings to passengers through good work. You know what we call this job? Miles of smiles, friend. Miles of smiles. Tell me something that'll make me laugh. I could use a chuckle. A chuckle. Wasn't the tree story supposed to be funny? Where'd it go? Thought it was over there. The music haunted story. Well, I already finished him, so I could I could try out my low-level ones on him now. Like the music haunted store. Let's level some of these up. Sky them to the winds. Not sure my brothers will find that one particularly scary. <laughs> the past? Now that's a tricky thing. Yes, porters may remind you of a certain type of way folks of our type used to be. There's no fight in that. Just happily working past it. Anyway, I'm in the mood for a good happy story. You got me? He just wants happy stories all the time. The silent twins. Creepy little kids. So, does that one scare you? Not sure about me. Traps? Imprisonment? Well, there's a difference between a train you have to ride and a train you get to ride. We porters want that difference to be us. Have any optimistic tales? I'd like to hear one of those. Yeah, he only wants happy stories. Since since I did Max and Matt, I can level up some of the weird ones. Tell the story of the ghost of a woman executed in Paris long ago. The one with the necktie. Uh, might not be telling that one to the boys, actually. Travel? We've all got places to be. And we've all got to get there somehow. So why not get the getting there to be as good as it can get? See? That's really important when getting there is all you got. Another night over. I surely did enjoy all those stories, though. Maybe next time I'll let down my hair a bit. What do you say? You must excuse me, friend. What kind of porter am I saying this trip is all about you, only to start talking about my own damn self? But enough of my indulgences. I hope I see you again. There we go. Knock that one out of the park and good to go. You can see two campfires out there, but I'm not going east. It's dangerous there. They've, they've heard all my stories. A hurried little girl collides into you with a wheelbarrow full of hay, nearly knocking you out of your shoes. Oh, I'm so sorry. You nod. But the way the girl fusses over the wheelbarrow. Was that apology meant for you? Those creepy little eyes. You lost? Lost? Me? No, not at all. 
She stands up taller and squares her shoulders, projecting an image of adulthood so stiff she looks about to tip over. But I guess I could use a little help. Can I ask you something pretty, please? Go on. Well, I found this critter, but my daddy won't let me keep it unless I take real good care of it. Relating this dilemma has put her on the verge of tears. Do you know how I can be the very best pet owner in the world? Food and shelter or a strong leash? Food and shelter. Also, you know, love. Perhaps. The girl bursts into hysterical laughter. Like she just heard the funniest joke. Well, I don't know how to feed it when it don't have a mouth. The laughter fades and her look of worry returns. Any other ideas? Lots and lots of love. She smiles so bright. That's all it takes? Gosh, I already love it so, so much. What is it? I have questions. Hmm. I guess we'll find out. Well, we'll never really find out what it was, because that's it for now. That's, that's it forever. We'll never see her again. But we'll get the exaggerations of the story, and that'll tell us what that st her story is based on, I guess. A woman found a creature with no mouth and rolled it around in a wheelbarrow. Bizarre. Just a moment there, he says, shaking your hand. I'm Paul Dalhart from the Republican Herald. You may have heard of it. Syndicated in six counties. Never heard of it. Well, no matter. But listen, you may have noticed a vocal few out there, I call them naysayers, who throw up their hands and fly the white flag as soon as life gets a little tough. But wouldn't you agree that it's never been a better time to live and do business in this country? No. Ha! Pessimism! Negativity! Faint-heartedness! He claps his notebook shut. If there is to be an end to the great American experiment, it'll be your attitude that writes it, not mine. Hmm. He has strictly positive views at all costs. That's one approach, I suppose. Let's see. Let's. I, I should step up, step up my stories as, as much as I can. Yeah, this one can be swapped out. Let's remove all of the randos. Yeah. I don't. I want to get. I want to get rid of. Uh, since I'm planning on meeting new people exclusively as I go west, I'm giving up on trying to beat people right now. Like finishing their stories. I'm going to remove anything that is a person's story, like the characters, because those you can't. Pro oh, I can't. I can't. I don't have enough of those because you can't progress those. Or I guess you can progress those, but they're just not. They're wild cards. They can't. Ah, uh, I don't know. Well, you can't. You can pro you can progress them, but you only progress them by, uh, by getting to the next chapter of that person's story. But these ones I don't want to remove. This one's a completed story, so I should save this for when I'm trying to finish off somebody somebody's arc. In the meantime, sub in something else that can level up. We need to plan for the end game now. Ow, oh, the woman executed in Paris is already finished. I can't switch it out though. Thunderbirds are done. Monster Maelstrom by Cincinnati. The mischievous ghosts. Shaw's in here. Oops. Get rid of Shaw. There we go. I'm really curious what the hell that story is going to be. A bull with a burning crown over its head that says sorry. I have no idea what we're talking about. Honestly, there's two of these I want to get rid of. Character and finished story, but I need more. <clears throat> need more for that category. I think I'm just bad at folklore, though. I just don't hear a lot of this stuff, generally speaking. I've never really had sit down around the campfire and t t tell spooky stories about things that are definitely not true and stuff like that. Ah, it's weird to me. 
What's that weird feeling in the air? Something between dread and frantic optimism. Maybe. Everywhere you look, there's looming factories filled with churning machines, and new unions, they say. The rain is coming down so hard. It's a wonder the sidewalk hasn't started to crack. You manage to find a narrow patch under a ledge where you can stay dry. Watch out for the, or wait out the rain. A squat man bundled up in a black fur coat and matching hat approaches. The thick rain flattens and mats his fur. He squints up at you. You're in my spot. He crows. Here you go? He thanks you as you step aside back into the rain. You keep walking, hoping to find more shelter. Glance back. Now that you see the man from a distance, you're not sure the fur is a coat. A pair of red eyes shine back at you. Keep walking. The rain stops a minute later. You look back up the road, but the squat man is gone. Ooh. Earn money. You wander the streets of the city looking for a way to make some cash. Digging holes. Not what you had in mind, but damn, they're digging a lot of holes in this park. A foreman assigns you to a work group with a mix of other disheveled men and women and sends you off to dig a pit by the water fountain. What's this about? Nobody wants to say. A young woman keeps mouthing something to you across the hole, but you can't make it out. What is she saying? Deer Lobby? Dave Hobby? Dean Bobber? You never get anyone to admit what this is all about. But you get paid pretty okay. Dave Hobby. Hmm. Hmm. New York and Baston. I have no idea what that was for. Maybe somebody can figure it out. It's like that one game you play in Jackbox where they mispronounce the thing and you have to figure out what they're what what it sounds like and under a time limit. Felt pretty good the time I was able to figure out that they were referencing all about the bass. But then the other time it came up, I got completely stumped, and I had no idea what they were what they're going for. Over a shared, crusty loaf of bread, the farmer notices you looking at a prominent, tattered scarecrow in the field. Oh, you like old Barney? He asks. Yeah. Does a damn good job scaring the vermin shame about the real fella. He was a funny one. Old Barney hiding out in our stables and lofts, just passing along. We liked him. Well, all except the sheriff. Barney never harmed nothing. I sometimes shared bread with him, just like you here. What happened to him? When he disappeared, leaving just the clothes we gave him, I figured I'd put him to use. Never got to know his proper name, neither. Across the field, the wind in the corn whispers. Or is it the Scarecrow? The Scarecrow's alive, and it's coming for you in your sleep. It's gonna get you. It's actually been, it's not, it's not scaring the crows. It's collecting them, it's saving them up for a crow pie. I, don't, I have no idea where the story is going. Deep in the fields, you come across a group of young men clearing weeds and sod from a roadside plot. Pitchforks flying, weeds dying. You almost don't notice that the dark lump beside them is a dozing boy lying smack dab in the middle of their work. Look closer. 
There's an odd frenzy to the way these boys are ripping the sod apart. When they notice you approaching, they jog over and stand silently between you and their sleeping comrade. What's going on? The youths share nervous looks. The oldest steps forward. G -g Get going, he blurts, leveling a pitchfork at your gut. His hands are shaking. He seems serious. Is your friend all right? You step closer, and the ringleader loses his nerve. He died, he blurts. He was sweating and crying, and he just fell over. They won't come get us with the truck till sundown. You realize now that the sleeper's been posed. The ashy shadow on his face wasn't cast by a tree. The boy who just died working out in the fields. Hmm. What is this? All right, these are chances to work, not chances to get across. Huge storm, the farmer gasps, pointing to the clouded horizon. You gotta get the produce indoors before the fields wash out. Can you help? You and his family strip the field of vegetables. When the rain hits, you're all safe inside, and you've got some coins in your pocket. It's good to be, it's good to feel needed. We are way out in the middle of nowhere right now. Just to discover some corpse. I've made some interesting choices today. A talented whistler. Throwing all, all that vibrato and little tones and everything. I just wish the whistle matched the song that was currently being sung in the background and like complemented it in kind of like an Outer wild sort of way. That'd be really cool. Instead, it's just like some random whistling that changes each time you do it. Like, I want to go faster, but I also want to hear the real music. I'm kind of at odds. Chicago. Downtown bustling behind you, Lake Michigan stretching before you. Chicago is beautiful, isn't it? But there's a dark heart to this place. Dangerous men on the streets and a glint of fear in people's eyes. It's the midday, and yet this whole neighborhood is eerily quiet. Everyone seems to have retreated into their homes as if warned of something. You soon realize what? The reciprocating sound of a Thompson gun emptying its drum. Run for cover. You get behind a car, putting the engine block between you and the sound. But it's muffled, coming from inside a building. You're in no danger, you think. So you allow yourself a peek above the black hull of the car. Look. And running down the cobblestone street, a man in fine, blood-spattered clothes. He has his hands out, mouth open, screaming something. But you don't catch what he says. He's drowned out by gunfire, and his body slumps to the ground. Keep watching. The men responsible three abreast in dark overcoats and wide hats, walk up to him to check on the body. The smallest of the three has a nervous energy about him. People are gonna see us, boss. People ain't gonna see nothing. Not on these streets. Damn. People ain't gonna see nothing. I can go to St. Louis. Bad at remembering where some of these places are. Oops. Wish I was better. 
St. Louis. They're saying that nobody's gonna see anything on these streets. Not because they literally won't see it, but because they won't acknowledge it, because everyone here is too afraid to report crimes. Because of the Mafia. The man lowers his paper as you come near. His weather-beaten face is drawn. They say it's spreading. The dust is strangling the land. Half my cattle suffocated in the last storm. We cut open the carcasses to salvage the meat. They were filled with mud. Sympathize with his plate. He licks his cracked lips. They stay dry. His land is dying. If the harvest fails again, people will too. You look past him, over his dust-choked fields. You can't imagine anything growing here. Can't you move away? Where would we go? My family came here for a fresh start. All we have is our claim. His voice is hoarse. We came here when there was no more work back home. Now this. If we leave, it'll just be something else. Your skin prickles gently, though the sky is still clear. Duster's on its way. Big one. He calls after you. Come by in a week. I doubt there'll be a building left standing. He says where he's so defeatist, saying like, where would we go? But if he has any ability to move at all, it's he kind of desperately needs to. If he's saying that like the earth itself will not grow anything, and your house won't be left standing in a week, like. Staying's not an option if you're being any if you're not being hyper hyperbolic. But it's the it's the depression though. There's not a lot else to do. Hell of a curse to have. All the cattle are filled with mud. I've met a lot of people like you on this road. There's something you want from it, isn't there? A desire that scratches and scrapes away at the sides of your body. Does being out here feed that part of you? It's that way for me. Living in a state of motion, resting nowhere, returning to no one. I've been a wandering ghost for a while now, and I'll be that way for some time to come. But that's a fate I should have known I was in for. I'm a poet, after all. Alone, out here. I spend too much time inside my own head. Can you tell me a hopeful story to lighten my mood? A hopeful story. I go back to that molasses dude. One of my go-tos. I like that one. Makes me feel the way Silas used to in the old days. Joy. I've had joy in my life. I used to be part of a group of mad prophets, rabble rousers, channelers of holy knowledge. We'd get a couple gallons of wine, bring them over to our friend Pauline's house. Then we'd shout these incandescent verses to each other, to the land and the sky. We were loud late into the night. What good would those words do if they didn't reach the heavens? Sometimes I want to hear a sadness that resonates with my own. Do you know any stories like that? A sadness that resonates with my own. Hmm. Sadness. The old, ah, oh, the old janitor. You used to be a school teacher. That one was like getting locked out in the cold with nothing but your sorrow. I liked it. The past haunts me. Every day I think about how things used to be. There was a time when it felt like Silas and I were inseparable. My poems, his books, we were part of each other's ideas. Now, I don't know how to describe how much I've missed that voice, his voice. Imagine that, a poet at a loss for words. The one thing I thought I could do, just gone. I need an optimistic story right now. Something to put a smile on my face. Can you think of any like that? 
Dude likes to feel good, huh? Optimistic. Still not what I think of for most of my stories. I mean, this guy only reports positive news. Eh? I'm afraid I don't get the joke. Choice. That's hard. You believe you know what's right and what's wrong? A lot of people do. And I have to say, I wonder about those people. Did someone tell them and they believed it? Did they figure it out for themselves? When things got rough, would they stick to those ideals? Even the strongest of us can shrivel away in the face of the world. Regular folks like you and me can hardly do better. Sometimes I want to hear a sadness that resonates with my own. Do you know any stories like that? Oh, you bet your ass I have sad stories. Yep, the boy who died in the field just now. The tragedy in that story, it's real. Have you ever tried writing poetry? Change. I've seen a lot of change. Everything, everyone I thought I had is gone. My friend Pauline, she had a big house and a husband who often wasn't around. So naturally, that's where we went for readings. We were wild. Radiant, sweaty, alive. All kinds of people came and all of them were poets. All of them with such beautiful souls. Each with so many things to say and the true heart to share them. It's hard to believe that's all gone now. Alone, out here. I spend too much time inside my own head. Can you tell me a hopeful story to lighten my mood? We're all out of hopeful, Jack. Because I'm all fixed, finished up, so now I'm just going to tell you nonsense. Like, this taxi that shows the writers its future actually might be helpful to you. I'm not sure. Well, I can find that kind of movie theater story at any stop along the road. I guess that one's thrilling, then. The future. Well, what do you want from this life you've been given? Do you think there's a chance you'll get it? It's good to march forward, thinking you can reach the goal you set out for yourself. Of course, we both know it doesn't always work out. Maybe it never works out. Not many people I know seem to have gotten what they want. Except for Pauline, maybe. Personally, I don't think what I wanted from this world was so unreasonable. I miss the old group. I really do. I still have that image in my head. Pauline's house. The poets. Jess. Me. But on top of them all, there's Silas. In my memory, he looms. He haunts. You ever meet someone so far above everyone else? It's like they were from a different plane altogether. That was him. A divine presence among normal human beings. Silas was part of the group, but at the same time he wasn't. He was better than any of us. Wiser, gentler, stronger. We all held him in respect. We were in awe of his power as a writer in reverence for the beauty of his soul. I still love him. <sighs> Look, I'm headed out this way. If you find yourself out there, maybe we'll meet again. I still love him. Yeah, no, Cassidy, you didn't have to spell that out. I got it <laughs> from every sentence you spoke. <laughs> 